Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show and access WMS Gold content. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show or click the link on our site. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show where we like to talk about that wrestling thing. Um, Spartan are r-a-s-s-l-i-n as we talked about previously um uh wow that threw me already uh coming at you live from the studios the mayhem studios in pittsburgh pa thank you guys live of course we just recorded a great interview with Justin Plummer of iwc the international wrestling cartel and the aftershock show over on indie indie mayhem show go check that out episode 23 uh wrestling mayhem show.com so we're starting a little late today uh, for you live guys here. Uh, but, uh, of course, thanks. Intro by Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com. Uh, check us out. We're at wrestlingmayhemshow.com on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube as well. And you can drop us a line to that email address at Good Times! Good Times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0. We're on Twitter at Mayhem Show, on the Facebook and Google Plus, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and, of course, for the best conversations, hit up the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Um, please like us, comment, all that kind of stuff on the iTunes, Spreaker, wherever you're finding us, uh, this show in video and audio formats. And of course, we're here live Tuesday nights, live.sorgatronmedia.com, about 9 p.m. We talk about wrestling of some sort, usually this show. Sometimes we bump up the Indie Mayhem Show to get an interview in. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we have our Patreon. I want to give shout outs to the Wrestling Revolution dot com uh and of course bo dickity Woo! Woo! you can support the show there uh it's kind of a value for value if you're digging us you want to support us directly give maybe a bucket an episode and we're kicking you the uh extra uh, uh gold uh content that we've been doing and we're, we're working on some stuff exclusively for you guys as well uh and in reverse world i'm finally introducing the people that are hanging out with me today uh first of all papa L- no that's not right where's he at where is he at? Papa Lunchbox is with us. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Papa Lunchbox here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Yes, as Sork said, it is a little late, and uh, it might be the second time that I fall asleep in the middle of the show. Oh no! Although you're you're not hitting the Nyquil again, right? Nope, just cat pills and Vicodin. Oh, also with us, Eamon, co-host of a show called the Indie Mayhem Show, coming at, to us from Corpus Christi, Texas. Hey, he's a commentator with Inspire Pro as well. Thank you, Sorg, for having me on your podcast for the very first time. He used to be a fan of wrestling. I did, um, I, I, but then I became in the business, as they say. I'm, I'm not. I'm no longer one of one of you marks, huh? Because I'm so much better than you. Because I'm in the wrestling business. No, I'm not. I'm still a wrestling fan, and I I want to rant about wrestling because I love to do it. And I love to do it with you guys. So. <laughs> also joining us in a weirdly frozen state. Uh, so we're going to try to get him out of cryo freeze. Is Mad Mike from the Bronx? Sorg, I am coming to you from the state of frozenness, New York, New York, because some blonde princess has been screaming "Let it go!" The top of her lungs, and we can't get her to stop. I don't understand. I I didn't see that movie, Mike. <laughs> I. I, but you, I, you obviously know what movie it is. I was going to say, <laughs> you understand the reference. Mildly. Mildly. Okay. Um, and of course, let's get the show started the only way we know how with the fan mail. One fan mail. So we got one fan mail this week. Where are your questions? Where are you at, people? It, was it that mild of a raw that nobody had? Sork. Yes. Sork. And it kind of was. I, I think we have to accept the horrifying reality that someone, I'm not going to name names, is um, 
assassinating fans of the wrestling match. Oh no, where'd they go? I haven't looked at the numbers. I haven't seen I think it's off. Seth Rollins. I, I feel like you should name names if you know who's killing our fans. Yeah, I don't, this know, is, I don't know. Share with everyone. I don't know who it is. Doc Remedy. I don't know. Oh. Who it is. Oh. I don't know, but I'm just saying. He said he would do some horrible things for a Wii U this week, so. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, we did get him a fan mail uh, from uh, the wife of the Matt Carlins, uh, Jen, uh, who they have a trip wife coming of up. The mainstream media. Wife of the mainstream media. Uh, they're, of course, off in Florida right now uh, in NXT land, from what I understand. So I'm hoping I'm hoping we hear a little bit of something about that. I just realized they have toys all over the place from the last show. I just. Um, I just want to know if if they get to NXT. I want to know um, how Bailey smells. Oh God! Don't oh, you do oh. that! Don't you ruin her! Don't no. you? Fu- no, no, it's it's fine. I follow her on Instagram. It's okay. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's only <laughs> slightly I follow, her on, I follow her on Instagram, so I can say whatever terrible thing I want about her. I didn't say uh, any terrible thing at all. I just asked a question. We asked the same question about Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, uh, but. It's Stephanie McMahon. When you're like on that level, you're allowed to to have creepy things said about you because you're like almost kind of not a real person. <laughs> what? What the fuck? What is wow. happening right now? What the this fuck has just gone happened? Up. I have been gone for fucking how many months, and this is what the show turns into. <laughs> Holy shit! Jesus. Hey man, I don't think it's you leaving. I think it's your return. This hasn't yeah, happened it? yet. Yeah. I, uh, Jesus. Um, so we have an email, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who will, it, and this is actually a question for us to pose, who will it be and why of Missy, Katie, or Jen will get into the most trouble on their trip to Columbus, Ohio for SmackDown? Uh, who will it, so it's who will it be or why or when? I, I, yeah, I think so. So, so the three, three ladies are leaving without their wrestling fan husbands and such by the way to columbus three hours away uh, 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 aim this is pittsburgh and this is columbus and it's three hours away i'll be out with yes. geography so it's basically it's basically corpus christi to austin okay little less okay so they're going off and, and they're doing this thing and they have tickets right on the aisle where the shield usually comes out okay for a smackdown tape and Jen Carlin's just got a weapons-grade supply of chloroform and a rag. Yes. And I was also yeah. the biggest Dean yeah. Ambrose fan. So uh, so that is the question. Who? What, how much trouble could they get into? And, then, then, you know, that, that these, guys, these guys have come. I don't think they can necessarily. I don't, I don't know. I, the, I, they, mean, I don't know if they can get into a lot of trouble. These like guys they, come trouble. down at least twice a week through the crowd like this, right? On, on TV. Nobody pops up there, and, and there's security that comes oh. down through with them, Jen, right? Jen, okay, Jen, to Jen, Missy, and Dutters, I, I don't know if you know that. As, as a guy in the biz, as they say, there's this thing called a rat, and it's oh. totally cool. It's totally natural. If you want to, like, you know, I'm, I'm not saying and I can't see Sork's face right now, but I'm assuming he's wow. saying Wow. I'm just saying nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. And there's w- nothing Amen. What wrong are you with saying? it. You just gotta pay for their gas, you know, and and, and it's fine. You get to have their company. And what you have you learned, learned in your, your year, year in the business? What a rat is. Enlighten those of us who may not know what a rat is, Amen. <laughs> I, I personally, Amen. Have Amen. I'm pretty that. sure we taught you what a rat was. See, you <laughs> thought. See, you I'm thought pretty you. sure that happened. What is your? What is what, Amen. Eamon, please enlighten us. Tell us. Tell us what. It- I, I. Oh God! I have dug myself into a hole. <laughs> Dig. Up. I just hear a lot of people talking about him. Okay, nowadays. That's all I'm saying. Is this just, uh, what, this- what are they talking about? What could that possibly mean? Jesus. I don't understand, Eamon. What is? I've literally that? my first my first week yeah, back. Yeah, Eamon. Eamon. My first week back. Use those National Wrestling Alliance skills. Oh, oh. Us, are the is? are the National Wrestling Alliance rats different than the regular indie rats? <laughs> what? Like, like, is there is there like is there like a union? 
Before I single-handedly get a partnership provoked, let's move on. Do they? they yeah. I mean, is there like? We can't just breach the subject and not explain to those of us who may not know. I thought it was this, obvious. Is there like this inside jargon? Is there like a union card that verifies cleanliness and that they've had their shots? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll do it like Mad Libs, okay? I'm gonna start, and you just fill in the gaps, okay? A rat is a... Fill in a noun. Okay, it's a noun? Okay, good. A noun. A rat is a... Um... Why am I... <laughs> why am I still going with this? Um... A... A person of opposite gender, because I, in my opinion, there can be male rats. I'm just okay. All right. A person of opposite gender to noun to a to a person within the wrestling business okay. who likes to get. By the way, you're terrible at Mad Libs. Who likes to get <laughs> their gas and and food paid for? <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's not really a, okay. You know, you know this 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 puts a whole different spin on that Vader story we just heard from Plummer. Yes, I uh, in the main <laughs> for episode twenty three to get the cover on that. Yeah. Um, no, I my point with that I was trying to make before this completely derailed. That's not I I I mean it in a joking matter. Don't 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 either think you're a rat or call people rats because they're people too. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. Rats are people around the issue. All you have to do is it's one simple sentence to explain to our listeners you know, this wouldn't what happen. you're talking about. This wouldn't happen if we got more than one email because Sword <laughs> would be... No, no, Eamon, Eamon, this wouldn't have happened if you used your big league pants and started digging a hole talking about rats. This wouldn't have happened then. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Anyways. I, I, but, um, but to... To legitimately answer the question, um, I've been to a show with Katie and Jen, and we weren't even in close proximity to the shield, and I was worried about them. Um, Jen more than Katie, so I, I, I think in, in descending order of who will get in the most trouble, uh, Jen, then Katie, and then uh, Missy may have to bail them out. So this, this I think we can all agree that Jen is the most likely one of three to get into trouble. Yes. Personally, I think what's going to happen is uh, Seth Rollins is going to get too close, uh, like within arm's reach of her, and she's going to stab a big pen into his neck. Do you think Seth? Well, here's the thing. Do you think? Do you believe Seth's coming through? Seth, I haven't watched SmackDown, so I don't even fucking know. He but, comes out. He comes out through the stage. Okay, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. So I I don't know. I I I don't know. It's, it's a conundrum. It is a conundrum it is. indeed. It is, isn't it? Uh, but no, they're going to be... Uh, don't be rats, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story, don't be rats, guys. Don't be rats. Here, this here fact rats. that Roman Reigns hasn't been assaulted by every woman since posting his tea party video with his daughter mm. is astounding. Yeah. Because I, ju I just saw it on main event today, and I don't even have ovaries, and I think they quavered. I yeah. think ovaries just formed. Yeah. And yeah. then virtually exploded. Um, Sorg, we should call them roveries. Roveries. So yes. testicles. I can't wait for the Facebook group tomorrow when this show drops. Because it's just going to be post after post of people begging Eamon to explain no. what he's talking about. <laughs> no. <laughs> just no. <laughs> Just the casual wrestling fan has no idea. But by the way, what you you're have, uh, we've lost the regular wrestling fan about 20 minutes ago. Um, if you have questions for Amy, they're just happy that that we're laughing and talking in loud mode. Feel feel free to tweet Amon questions about rats at Amon to please <laughs> on Twitter. He will answer all of your questions. I promise. Honestly, I, I don't see there being any more than manner. one question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll be surprised how many did we just ask. Anyways, yeah. So I, I want to circle back because this is this is kind of an interesting thing that happened this week. This fatherhead uh, program. Um, it, it, geez, how much stuff has WWW has been in anti-bullying programs? They're on a cancer, uh, 
Cancer Month uh, uh, promos and doing the whole thing, uh, turn the ropes pink. In case you needed any more encouragement, Roman Reigns, Tyus O'Neil, and Alberto Del Rio have to remind you, hey guys, pay attention to your kids. <laughs> Which is a problem. I mean, that's... It is a problem, you and don't I understand get, that. Listen, you don't get a manual when you get the babies, okay? Um, I understand. And it's hard. And it's hard to be a parent. I would. Well, I don't know presume. if it's necessarily an issue of the whole manual thing. I think the whole campaign is about like fathers who desert their children, which is basically taking the manual and like making it into like blunt paper and smoking weed out of it. What? That's what a metaphor. What are you talking about? I, I'm trying to. I try to make a metaphor of of fathers abandoning their what children. What is the manual? Oh God. I, I, Snorg brought up the manual and I tried to run with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listeners. I have all this. <laughs> I can't make puns and I can't do metaphors. I'm so glad he's I, back. My job and is you to talk. can't explain what a rat is. And my job is to talk for a living. So uh, no, no, the first one I saw of these was uh, the Alberto Del Rio uh, a giant one that had Big Show and Kane in it. The and Del Rio run is super underrated. It is. Everyone's talking about the Roman Reigns one, but the the, the real one's my personal favorite. Honestly. It was. It, it came out of left field. I did not. See, I have not found the Titus O'Neil one. These are not easy to find, guys. Maybe they are the now. Titus O'Neil one was on Raw. It was the was Titus O'Neil one was kind of creative, actually, because for those that haven't seen it, it's basically like it looks like he's setting up for like a poker night with the boys or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you know, he's like got the chips and 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 and. <laughs> what am I turning to Bill Cosby? Um, <laughs> No, that's that's he, that's uh, LB's job. But he sets up the table and he's got well, like all sets cards. up the table and the poker guys and the jello pudding. And instead of like love it so much. Instead of uh, him playing poker with like his guy friends or whatever, like I'm assuming like Darren Young or whatever, like uh, he's basically playing go fish with his kids. So that was creative and it was fun. Awesome. Awesome. No, yeah, good thing, and and, and uh, they're a lot of fun. And hey, we're talking about it, and I like that they're doing, um, not, you know, it, it's not John Cena all, all over everything, right? It is yeah. Titus O'Neil. John Cena has no responsibilities. Uh, yeah, e- exactly. He's not. <laughs> he's not a dad. I, I guess that's one of the qualifiers for it, right? It's like they gotta he takes find care after he, he he has a loving relationship with his pool with a giant water slide, though. <laughs> I apparently need to watch Total Divas. Um, wow. That was the first season, too. So, just so that out there. and I don't know if we, we touched much on it. I, I know we talked about it a little bit last week. But uh, now uh, we're a week later. The the Shield fallout. Um, how are we feeling about the Shield breakup? Is it too soon? Is it too soon? It's not too soon. The I issue think it's not that it's too soon. The issue, is that, the issue is not that it is too soon. Okay. Um I think they had a good run, and I do. I really appreciate how they teased it, like what, like six months before, like to now, mm-hmm. like because the you see it constantly. Immediately where there's dissension, they break up. That's what happens with every stable and with every team, and it's it's formulaic and it's terrible. I think Lunchbox mentioned it last week about the whole how the Cody Rhodes Gold Dust thing's different now because Cody didn't just like desert his brother like he's he's you know. The, doing a story with it and now I'm, actually intri- I'm actually intrigued by it because i think like cody mentioned that the new hit the part his partner for next week is someone nobody he hasn't seen before or whatever so i really I hope it's cody in like a gold dust outfit that would, that would be fun um but that. no i'm excited for that um and i think them teasing the breakup and like them having the ascension and then realizing that they are amazing as a team so they formed together and got over their problems is an amazing story and, you know, the problems with Seth Rollins' turn, I, I thought it was a good turn. I thought it was a shocking turn. It's accomplished a lot that, you know, and eventually they were going to split up. I think it, the writing was on. They have to. I mean, they, they're really, um, I mean, these these are definitely, you know, guys that are poised to be the main event. They have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at those guys. Look at the reactions. And I love, I love the trios matches. They've been, the amazing trios matches they've been putting out constantly. Mm-hmm. Like it's amazing stuff and consistently. Um, but and but I can understand. And I think their 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 parts will be will be significant enough that they will be the same as them together. Mm-hmm. Um, if that makes sense. Um, my problems with the the thing. John Cena. 
Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I, I don't know if anyone's like, listened. I don't know if anyone's listened to me this past year. I never really am like fuck John Cena. He's a fucking he's shit. Whatever. I'm usually not that guy. I think he's a good wrestler. Mm-hmm. I think you know he's significantly underrated in my opinion. But good God, he knows how to ruin people. Well, John and Cena. Is, uh, John Cena tagging with the Shield is like your parents saying they like your favorite video game. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think it's a little more upsetting because um, they it was like, oh, the Shield's gonna have a third mystery partner, and a lot of people automatically assume they're gonna introduce a new member of the Shield. And then when it was John Cena, you know, hopes were a little higher than just they're gonna have a third tag member. I don't and know why that people certainly have, didn't help. And, and maybe I'm overthinking it. In my opinion, though, John Cena should never be teaming with the Shield. Or vice versa. The Shield are mercenaries who are designed to work. They are, they're in many a sense loners. You know, they don't have alliances with anyone. You know, they, with, except for each other, basically. So, you know, even like they were trying to team with the Wyatts a bit, and then that, you know, because they're on their own, and, and that's one of the selling points of that. Well, I, I think all you need to do to really fix that is maybe have a backstage segment beforehand. With Cena saying something like, listen, I don't like you guys. Never have, never will. You've sneak attacked me more times than mm-hmm. I can count. I want Bray Wyatt again. Absolutely. That's, that's like, if they that did would, that, honestly, that would explain it perfectly. Reason. Yeah, that'd be fine. Because I am so sick of people turning face and then immediately they're siding with every other face person on the roster and it erases all the past history. Is the worst see, thing about wrestling. That's the only way that you know the Shield are faces. They're acting exactly the same and doing completely the same things. The only difference is who they're fighting and who they're teaming with. But that shouldn't be a formula, though. It yeah, really but you should, you you should be have... able to identify if their faces are heels by the way they're wrestling or by, you know, yeah, in the people they're facing, not by the people they're teaming with. Well, you can even have a new face team up with with other faces but just have there be a little bit of friction absolutely I, of, like they shouldn't work like a well-oiled team they shouldn't be entirely trusting of each other like john cena should have never turned his back on the shield at any point during that match mm-hmm. right but, i had mentioned um I, and i don't know if i mentioned it on this show it may have been before we started recording i've been starting to watch a bit more attitude era stuff uh, because I listen to this podcast called the Attitude Era Podcast, and they, one of the th- recent shows they talked about was a, I think it was a the SmackDown pilot, and it was right about around the time after WrestleMania 15 when uh, Rock basically got taken out of the corporation and turned face, and he was scheduled to team with Steve Austin. He fought at WrestleMania like two months before. And they cut a promo in the ring, and Rock's basically like, Stone Cold, I'm teaming with you tonight. I don't like you. If you think we're friends, that's bullshit. You know, I I will turn on you at you know if you cross me. They don't compromise that just because the Rock's a face. He doesn't have to suddenly be friends with Steve Austin. Right, I think right. that's something that's – and it's, it's maybe not be the case, and maybe it's too early to jump with this John Cena Shield thing, but it's so formulaic when that happens to the point where it's just so frustrating. I think that also has to do with the fact that you're not going to see another face versus face rivalry anytime soon. Like you did see with Austin versus the rock, like Austin versus the rock at a time during the attitude era, they were both the two top faces in the company and they were going after each other. You're not going to see that kind of thing again, just because that doesn't really sell that much. I mean, we saw it last year a little bit with Daniel Bryan and John Cena, but that had the Triple H undercoating of a heel. Like, that had all of that layered underneath. They just told a story is the thing, and you can cheer for whoever you want, and it's not necessarily the fact that it's wrong. That, you know, yeah, both Daniel Bryan and John Cena can be considered by many a face because they have positive qualities about themselves and good good moral character qualities about themselves in that feud and they're feuding with each other because they want the WWE championship. So you can assess that however you wish, you know, it doesn't have to be like, I'm the, on this side now. So therefore I'm immediately friends with you. But that is something that's very difficult to do. 
and you can't do it all the time. Yeah, you can't do it all the time. I think they did well with Danny Bryant and John Cena, though. I, I, I think, you know, I to a lesser degree, I think they did it with John Cena The Rock. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think they wanted to do it with John Cena and The Rock. But they Cena wanted to off. do it all the time. I, and to take into account, people boo the shit out of John Cena constantly. That doesn't necessarily make him a heel. That's true. But even he, like, dropped a few kind of heel-ish tendencies because that was the time where Kane was trying to release the evil in John Cena and all that bullshit. Oh, fun stuff. Remember those days. <laughs> Awesome. Good talks here on that note. Uh, let's go to our break. Let's check out some stuff going on from the Sorgatron Media Store. And, and keep an eye out. There's some uh, 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 some announcements going to be coming up in the coming weeks. They're going to be pretty exciting. Uh, so uh, we're going to check this out and be right back for Remember When. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check out those and other fine products at sorgatronmedia.com. I promise you will not be disappointed. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, as we discussed in the first half of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, John Cena uh, just had to stick his nose into the Shields business, and uh, nobody liked it. Uh, One of those things is not like the other. And in this week's Remember When, we're going to talk about when one of those things was not like the other. Remember when showing everyone's faces I remember when we're gonna remember when we can't help ourselves but remember again that everybody know we're still going. Okay, still going? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, John Cena in the Shield. And I want to talk about another time where John Cena tagged with somebody who didn't really go together. Uh, and that was, of course, Shawn Michaels. He teamed with Shawn Michaels, and they won the tag belts together. Uh, and they didn't give a shit about the tag belts that they had. They just kind of ignored it and hated each other. Uh, so that was good times. Uh, Bobby? Uh, mine's, mine's not two mainstream superstars, but um, two guys that were pushed together that didn't really get along at first. I'm going to go with Al Snow and Steve Blackman. God oh, snap, yes. you Big cheese. The best. Big cheese. One of my favorite tag teams of all time. So, yeah. Damn it, Bobby. That, that, that Steve Blackman and a cheese head like, hat was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so, not Mike. Uh, how about you, Wheels? What do you What do you got? I, I was sitting there thinking. I was like, "What about How about John Cena and Nexus? I mean, that one was hmm? definitely a strange bedfellows." Oh, that's that, right. Because they like yeah. kind of did they, they did a thing where they kind of like controlled him or something, right? He was their yeah, slave. Uh, Cena and David Otunga won the tag titles, didn't they? Yes. Yes, they really? did. Didn't he lose and he had to join Nexus and they made little kids cry? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. Mm. Wow. What about you, Mike? Did you come up with a replacement? Yes, yes. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the time that Stone Cold Steve Austin needed a tag team partner because um, his tag team partner, I want to say it was uh, Shawn Michaels, couldn't mm-hmm. wrestle. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, then we heard the only cat who could bring peace to the war zone, and that was Dude Love. Dude Love and Stone Cold Steve Austin tag teaming together. That was just like Austin's face when Dude Love came out was one of the most priceless faces Austin ever had. It was great. Hmm. Nice. Awesome. And uh, uh, Riz, do you have one? I do. It's very obscure, too. Okay. Um, remember Team Canada? 
Which oh. one? Yeah, which with team Lance had a... Storm, with Lance Storm, WCW, and right? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Riz, really? <laughs> Encyclopedia. <laughs> Come on. He's Hacksaw. He's Hacksaw. not Canadian. <laughs> Come on, guys. He's not fair. Canadian. <laughs> to be fair, Glens <laughs> Falls, New York, is pretty close to Canada. <laughs> It's still America. America. You say Missy's Canadian all the time. I wish Axel would have changed. Did he change his uh, catchphrase to "Hey"? <laughs> I don't no, think, I don't think so. so. I think points. Bobby, points. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Uh, who else needs to go? Uh, you, oh. Sorg. Um, I, I can also. I guess I took a different. Uh, approach to this because I kept thinking back to the old Survivor series when they used to actually have the teams and some of the weird pair ups like like I'm looking back and I, I just wanted to take a peek at some of the old ones and kind of just see like like how odd some of these look like we talked about them a little bit in the last uh, show we recorded here uh, the Hulk of Maniacs one year Survivor series 1990 and think about this just kind of in context you got Hulk Hogan Jake the Snake Roberts one of his runs is a face, right? But still, it's Jake the Steak Roberts, right? And mm -hmm. Demolition. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's more American, real American, than Demolition, I tell you what. Um, but, of course, they were taking on, I guess it made sense, because it was a million-dollar team of, of Ted DiBiase, Powers of Pain, and Virgil, apparently. So, there you go. Well, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sorry, Riz. Sorry, Riz. Riz. What's the score? No. 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 You're not, you're not doing that to me, Wills. No. <laughs> no. Uh, I think that is that everybody? Uh, no, it's not because I haven't gone. Oh, it's hey, Eamon. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't even know. I'm not know used you to you being show. here. So, what do you got? It, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to think of. I. A couple of mine I had as backups and they were taken. So I'm thinking of an obscure one. I don't know if it necessarily applies, but I'm going to go with it. Um, remember in 2003 when Test was uh, in a relationship, I guess you could say, with Stacey Keebler. <laughs> and they were teaming with Scott Steiner. Oh. And, and Scott Steiner was like, I don't like how you treat Stacey. And then moved on, like got Stacey. And then they basically kept like revolving around who got Stacy and then they eventually like Scott Snyder turned heel and they were eventually like what's the one thing we have in common oh right we like to be really abusive to our girlfriends <laughs> and that's how we became a tag team and then they like started like hitting her in the ass with kendo sticks and it was weird and stupid and it's one of the reasons <laughs> why I my parents were not cool with me watching wrestling so, <laughs> well let's be honest like we Snyder. weren't cool with watching wrestling then so, yeah, yeah, um, awesome. If you uh, want to let us know your kind of strange bedfellows, weird teams, uh, let us know. Good times of wrestling mayhem show at mayhem Ruby show all, all over the place, of course. Uh, so now I want to tell you about uh, a way you can support us and support uh, wrestling in general. Of course, our friends at ProWrestlingTees.com. You can pick up the T-shirts. WMS, great stuff by Alex Cars out there in California. Good times of wrestling mayhem show shirt. Sure. Property of the right. logo, all that kind of stuff. And of course, check out other great stuff with ProWrestlingTees.com. Stick us in the cart next to, hey, Vader. There's a great story about Vader on the Andy Mayhem show this week. Um, Buy this shirt. What's that? Buy this shirt. Hold on. Where are you at? Where are you at? I got to at? at the bottom of the right screen. There, that look good times. It looks good on you, Bobby. It looks good on you, Bobby. Uh, and you can also support other wrestlers like uh, Chris Hero yeah, out on the yeah, Indies. Uh, great stuff from some of the guys you know, like uh, uh, Macho yeah. Man or Jim Ross, ACH, Anthony Nice, friends of the show like Zima Ion, Matt Cross, who just uh, showed up on American Ninja Warrior this week. Uh, go check that out on Hulu, actually, uh, to see how he did there. Um, they call him a weird name, though. Uh, other guys like Tim Donst, who's been wrestling locally with the VOW. Uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, as well as the, the Pateri, who's there too. Veda Scott, uh, who I think, didn't you work with her recently, uh, Eamon? I did. I did get to work with her recently in Spy Pro Wrestling. Nice. Spy Pro Wrestling .com. Yeah, Shark Boy. There you go. go yes, Shark Boy's out there too, if you're into that kind of thing. So check it out. ProWrestlingTees.com slash 
WMS. So let's get into a, a little bit more discussion. Well, I want to touch on once a little bit of news, unfortunately, this week. Oh, God, this is a TMZ story. You son of a bitch. I love because it's legitimate. You, you report it, but it makes you so angry. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I hate that this sword. is a news source. Have you ever watched the TV show? Yes. Yeah. If that doesn't make you violently angry, for. we were um, out at a we were, we were getting a new car at the Ford dealership, and uh, and they just had it on the TV, and it just made me so angry as I sipped my complimentary water. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but no, uh, but anyways, the the big I don't even want to show this now. I was wondering why there's such an ugly headline. Um, Jim Ross suffered stroke-like symptoms before a uh, hospital sent last week. He was uh, actually attending the Cauliflower Club. Um, actually, I, I was seeing pictures on Facebook of uh, Lord Zoltan uh, here locally mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh, who I just saw t- in the front row with uh, at the uh, uh, McFoley show a with couple Danucci. weeks ago with Dominic Zoltan. Danucci. Uh, Zoltan there? What's that? Zoltan was there. Zoltan was what? I, I didn't. I didn't. Spot. I, I know Don. Oh what? yeah, yeah. He was like on, like right on the other side of the aisle. I you wouldn't know. notice yeah. him because he wasn't. He wasn't wearing, wearing his pajamas. face point out he paint LB. He wasn't in pajama pants. And he wasn't wearing pajama pants. He didn't come out with I like big butts. Um, I cannot lie. Or anything like that. He kind of <laughs> looks like a normal person. That's weird. I know, right? <laughs> I, know. I know. That's weird. That <laughs> <part> <laughs> is weird. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the weird thing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but no, unfortunately, Jim Ross uh, apparently having some more uh, health issues, so uh, our hearts and prayers go out from the Mayhem Show to Jim Ross. Uh, Wait, I, I maybe I may have don't know if this I may be reading I have read this about someone else, so I may be wrong, but I believe he was released from the hospital. Oh yeah, yeah, he's he's yeah, in he and was, out. He, he was, was he was there getting uh, tests, I think, and I think he had to be there like a couple days. Uh, the, the actual the actual cause what, what went wrong with him was um, he it was a problem with his medication his medications were interacting badly um, and that's that's what they found out at the hospital running all the tests they also discovered that he had an undiagnosed stroke that he was unaware of that had happened a few days earlier wow. um, but then he, he wrote a blog post about it and uh, apparently it was ambient um, the fact that he was taking ambient ambient has crazy side effects and um, that's what that's what he's interacting poorly with it. So he's, he's back on his feet now. Good there. Nice. Nice. Um, of course, the other big news this week, they did strip Daniel Bryan of the championship. Of course, uh, uh, a cameo by Pittsburgh's own Dr. Moody. Uh, what? So. what? 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 Sword. What? Dr. Maroon. Maroon. Dr. Maroon. I'm sorry. What maroon? No, the other name that's more ridiculous. <laughs> what than... a darker red color. I'm sorry. <laughs> I prefer to go. Uh, you're, nice. you're very young. I, I, I prefer to go to Dr. Magenta. Points. It feels but yeah about fucking time. <laughs> yeah, that they that they made a decision, right? Yeah. So I'm at the point. Okay, I don't know if this is a popular opinion with you guys, but I'm at the point where it's just like just fucking take the tiles off of him, give him the time to fucking heal up, yeah. have him come back strong. That's, yeah, that's that's just what basically let's move on guys right honestly a lot of the stuff after mania was not going that great for him mm. so i, I think a fresh sense. start would be really, really uh good. he's married i think well, it I makes personally, sense yes. for a definite answer but the fucking backstage segments with kane and all this like all that shit was just terrible mm. and and they just need to restart and they need and I, honestly i still want I still want to see. I, I started this campaign last night, and I'm going to keep it going. I want at SummerSlam to see Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. I want to see that match. He got to drive a forklift at Extreme Rules. That was something. <laughs> He's from a small town, Bobby. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, and this is what also – the topic that gets thrown around about this is that the character of Daniel Bryan, in I think in general, since for a long, you know, he is the underdog. Mm-hmm. His character is he is the underdog. So if he's, you know, give, I think they can make an interesting story about him fighting back to get back to that championship, and it can yeah. be just as an interesting story as when he won it at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. well, it, it feels like well, I am, I am a little worried 
a tiny bit worried about them going to the well one too many times because we had that story at SummerSlam, right? Mm -hmm. We had that story at WrestleMania. So we're going to have that story again at SummerSlam. Um, I thought I, I don't think it'll, I don't think SummerSlam. No. I think he'll be taking some time off beyond SummerSlam. Personally. Yeah. And I think probably um, should. And it's unfortunate because he's so red hot right now. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So maybe they can. I think he'll come back strong. I, I really do. I, I'm now, I, there's a point, and obviously, as a wrestling fan, concerning like these sort of indie guys, you have to be worried in a sense. We yeah. were worried when he yeah. fucking choked out Justin Roberts and he got fired. There, yeah. there's, a two reason, there's a two word reason why you should be worried about Daniel Bryan. And those two words are Dolph Ziggler. You're afraid he's going to become a Dolph Ziggler as far as, like, lost in the Ooh. shovel? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think as much as as much as much I like Dolph Ziggler, honestly, I defend Dolph Ziggler more than most people do. Um, I don't think he has as hot of a, of a following as Daniel Bryan does. No. No, nobody no, does. No, he doesn't. He doesn't now. But I think it could I don't be think he did then, he, though. He I got think, good reactions, but like, and the WrestleMania. I think it could be argued that he did. The post Raw Mania pop when he won the title was awesome, and it was a great moment. But it's you know, there's gonna he's I think I see him slowly becoming. But, but you like know what has Jack bigger? Ryder. You know what has bigger momentum than Daniel Bryan? The Yes Champ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That yes. that chant has become bigger than him. So mm -hmm. I don't know, like, people can just co-op that chant now, and it's like they get Daniel Bryan reactions. Now, now, oh, now wait a minute. Now, now, I want to I point out something, because, I mean, we've seen it with the Zack Ryder. Everybody getting behind him. He gets there, and then it falls off. Same, you could say, with uh, Dolph Ziggler. Although Ziggler had a similar, he finally got the title, and then he got hurt. Like, Daniel Bryan is kind of suffering from now, and they just never brought him up again. Um, so... Mm -hmm for whatever reason, and that kind of cools them off, right? Like, we take a shot with you, this happened, and we're moving on, and maybe we'll circle back to you. But they, we yeah, have but, it for... but Sorg, I don't think you can really compare it to Zack Ryder, because Zack Ryder never got hurt. They just pushed no. him... Well, no, no, they... no, and, 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 and to say, like, aside from the injury, I really, you, you can say the Dolph Ziggler post-title one was kind of flat, too. He, he was in a program with uh, Alberto Del Rio that was kind of like eh what are we doing here you know kind of feeling like I, I disagree with that I, no, I disagree with that too okay. that, that, that program created my match of the year that year okay. so I'm just putting that out there that payback match is, that payback match is one of my favorite matches the, the, the one of Dolph defending and coming yeah. back from the yeah we were raving about it last matches. year because they did like the double turn and everything and it was awesome mm-hmm I, I think they, I think Dolph was a case where they could have gone. I feel like something happened besides him getting injured to where he fell from the wayside because he got a concussion. He was out for a month. He missed one of the first pay-per-views, I think, because he was supposed to have like a ladder match or something. Uh, he missed that, and then he came back and had the match with Del Rio. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel Bryan is going to be out for an extended period of time. I think that's where the difference lies. Personally, I'm... Something has happened, and I'm not in the backstage of WWE. Something happened, I, in my opinion, beyond Dolph Ziggler getting a concussion. Yeah. To why he got sort of Maybe wrong, you know, wrong person uh, the wrong way or something like that. Because they could have recovered from that. They just yeah. lost him for now, one paper. Daniel Bryan, it, it, ideally, and you know, this kind of injury, I, I'd say he has to be out six months, right? At Personally, least. yeah. At least probably longer. Oh, for the neck? Like, yeah. For the neck. Mm -hmm. Um. He comes back, let's say, Royal Rumble. I think he's one of those guys, much like when you saw an Edge come back, anytime Triple H would come back from an injury, it was always that reinvigorated, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think, I th And I think Daniel Bryan's going to be one of those guys that's going to benefit from that. Um, it's unfortunate when the injury happened, but and he, I don't think he was suffering from the same things like, Whenever John Cena goes away for six months and comes back, it's the best thing ever, right? John like, Cena never goes away for six months. That's true, too. <laughs> he never yes. does. <laughs> no, I, I, that's a good point. I wonder if they're going to do that with Daniel Bryan, if they're going to, you know, he's not going to wrestle, but I wonder if they're going to try to keep him on television. And, and they could. Guy. Maybe we, we, we give him a commissioner thing, you know? This thing with the authority could turn into, I don't know, the board of directors determined 
Because in all fairness, like he's been taking him. It's been about a month. Yeah. And he's, you know, he hasn't been in really any physical activity. But they've had him show up. Cause damage. He's not supposed to. Just just getting thrown around by King. But I did well in you know they work around that, but he's still appearing on Raw. Yeah. No, I I, know. I meant literally drug when he drug him out on stage. That's all. Well, okay. He pulls him by his 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 shoulder. But I mean, I mean, like in Capic terms, like like he has an injury, but like he's still being on Raw. He's still been on Raw for a month. You know, yeah, he hasn't been wrestling anymore. But you know, there's I think there's going to be there's like I said, I think I agree with Sorg where there's going to be some way where they can still keep him involved in yeah. some form or fashion. Well, we'll I mean, see. yeah. It, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say if you sit there and think about it, is we haven't seen Vince in a while either, mm-hmm. and you can see Vince going. You know what, Stephanie and Triple H, you guys got rid of Brad Maddox. I need a GM for Raw, and I don't like Vicky enough, and neither and do you guys. Vicky's supposed to be and going away Daniel, too, but and they, so and you put Daniel Bryan in that Raw place for a while, and you put maybe Bree on SmackDown, just till they both get to their own. Uh, no, but the thing is, with the with the authority running the show, the GM position is worthless. That look on Riz's face is goddamn. <laughs> Brie on SmackDown. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's better that his voice isn't quite there yet. Oh. Riz, you sound like you're gonna cry, buddy. You're so pretty. <laughs> 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 Riz, on that so note, no, on that, that note, guys, let's let's go around the horn. Nowhere. Tell me, what'd you learn from wrestling this week, Riz? Like, I want, I'm curious what you learned. I learned. <clears throat> you hit puberty. <sighs> <laughs> I, I learned that you can believe whatever you want to believe and be a champion at life. <laughs> Believe. Believe. LB, what'd you learn from wrestling? Uh, I learned that they sell eggnog year-round in Minnesota. Oh. <laughs> huh. What about you, Mike? I learned... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what? what have anything to do with wrestling? Did you because watch the Layla summer they, race? They I was going to say, did I miss it? Was it eggnog? It looked, like, it looked like eggnog that they poured on her head. It looked, yeah, it looked that was some thick crazy. shit. That was some really thick stuff. Also, what? It was, almost, it was almost like they were looking for a Brazers uh, ad. Yeah, and they did another one on main event, too. Um, <laughs> I, I learned two things. One, <laughs> Kurt Angle is going to announce the third member into the TNA Hall of Fame this Sunday. And no one gives a shit. And the second thing I learned is that Summer Rae is apparently allowed to say twat on the WWE Network. Wow. <laughs> wow. She, she hey, called Brie Layla... Brie Bella is allowed to say bitch on USA. No, bitch and twat are very different things. Yeah, twat, you should ask, you should ask your friends the rap about them. I don't know. Amen. Twat is one of the seven dirty words. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Despite your lack of ability to be able to teach us something at the beginning of the show, I want to know what you learned this week. I learned from this week that NXT is the best goddamn show on television right now, and I don't care what anyone says. That last, that last episode of NXT was fucking rad, and, and you need to check it out. Riz, don't talk over me. I'm going to call campus security. Okay? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That was, that was good. Wheels, what'd you learn? What did I learn? I learned from this past weekend that I really love watching the matchup of Osirian Portal versus Generation Dead. Oh, that had been good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. In the main. Uh, I, I, oh. What about Bobby? I want to know what Bobby, Bobby. learned. Bobby. Oh, I learned. I learned. Bobby learned. I learned a new word this week. What the hell? Oh, no. What? Was it rat? Yeah, it was. Um, no, I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I learned that, that Damien Sandow can rock a nude body yes. suit. <laughs> what is oh going on? Oh, no. What is going on? And, 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 
it, it's terrible what they're doing to him, but he's taking it with such like fever and just striving for ev- anything, you know? He's Sponge doing it. Sexy he's, could, could we say he's believing oh, no. in himself? Oh, in no. himself. Sponge, 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 this is where he needs to do jazz hands so bad. <laughs> Oh my god. And I learned so, that was amazing. I didn't even have to look up porn that night. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you, you didn't have to see any toys. <laughs> Bobby, no. <laughs> 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 That word, that word of day calendar I'm gonna start right uh, now. Uh, sure, sure, take us home. <laughs> Please tell me what you learned. <laughs> Sorg, did you learn about squats or rats? Yeah. Sorg, it's okay, buddy. What did I learn? Jeez. Oh, uh, I learned that even when I'm uh, 100 miles away, wrestling will find me on a Saturday night. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been your Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody here, for joining us. Thank you for joining us in the chat room live at SorgatronMedia.com. We start up around 9 p.m. Train. Eastern Time. WrestlingMayhemShow.com for this. Other shows, the Raw Wrap Up, the NXT Thursday Night War with Impact. Uh, and also iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, all that stuff, audio and video format. Subscribe, favorite, comment, all that kind of stuff. Drop us line at Good Times <laughs> at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, and 412-206-WMS0. Thank you to our note taker and tweeter, Mike Allen. Mike Allen PR on the Twitters. Thank you, Mike Allen PR. Thank you. Facebook, Thank you. Google, Thank at Mayhem Allen. Show. Mayhem out.